Here I am, Leon C, aka Morpheus. You are now listening to the Academy of Wow. Wow, 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 man. <laughs> and uh, it's definitely windy outside and very full of activity, so you're going to hear a lot of stuff in the background and the computer, I mean the uh, speaker, not the computers, picks up on a lot of things, the microphone. But I'm going to have to talk to you anyway about this particular matter. And uh, again, do my best to make it short and sweet. I got to stop saying that because every time I say try to make it short and sweet, <clears throat> it, ends up, it ends up being like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. And I really don't like the hours and 20 minutes. I don't. I prefer for these lessons to be 30 minutes, but it's so difficult because there's so much to say. There's too much idiot behavior in the world. It's too many people who are mind blocked and zombie asses where talking about it in a certain segment isn't enough. I don't have a long attention span. I mean, a short attention span. See, I don't go along with the programming. Let me give you an example of what I mean by the programming. What do you mean, Morpheus? Explain yourself. Okay. I had a conversation with a guy not too long ago, and we were talking about vehicles and, and automobiles. And we got to the discussion of some of the new vehicles that they make, cars, trucks, etc. And uh, I told him, I said, I respect an automaker who sticks with his blueprint. What that means is, I respect automakers that I can identify with that sticks with their design and their concepts. Meaning they don't try to change up the design because other companies are doing it. They're not trying to make their their car look like a Ferrari. They're not trying to be like a Bugatti. They're not trying to switch up and look like a, uh, you know, the trucks. You know, they're not trying to look like a Ford F-150 or a Dodge 1500. I like for them to have their original makeup. I don't care if it's a 19, 1980 versus a 2022, 23, 24. If that automaker sticks with their design like this, say this is BMW, BMW is BMW for a long time, meaning this is what we do. You want a BMW? It's going to look like a BMW. It's going to have the design as a BMW. Then they get their respect. I'm not saying that that's what BMW is doing, I'm just giving an example here. It can be a 2025, but if it still looks like a Ford Mustang, then I'm going to appreciate them or give them their honor. But a lot of times, if you notice, there are too many, and I'm going to say it because I don't care how you feel. This isn't about your feelings. This is about reality here. This is about facts. These fresh out of college, new strange, and weird, yeah, I called you weird, bozos that think they know something want to switch up the design and do something different because they want to make a sale, because they want to be like the rest of them. They'll say, well, you know, the young kids, they want to drive this. This is where we get a market for us. So we're going to go ahead and switch the wheels like this. We're going to make the engine this way. We're going to make the inside that way because that's what makes a sale. When that happens, a lot of times they have to compromise with their design. They have to compromise with their originality. Therefore, I can't respect them. Because they're bending to the society. They're bending to make a sale. They're bending to try to be like other automakers. They'll say, well, you know, Bugatti's making this type of sale. So I want to be like Bugatti. So I'm going to jump on board with Bugatti. I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I understand in the, uh, you could say, in the market and in the buy and sell world, there is a bit of competition. I get it. You want to make your money and you see other people's stock going up and they're getting the prestige and they're getting um, a lot of customers that you want customers as well. But what happens is you get these numb nuts. Yeah, I said it. You get these strange people who got a banana stuck in their rear tight, their real pipe. OK, they got a banana stuck in their ass. How about that? You know, they'll say, you know what, we got to sell. We got to sell, 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 and sell our soul, and sell ourselves, and sell our design, and sell our originality. 
So we're going to sell ourselves and try to be just like the other people. I, they're doing it, so I'm going to do it too. Monkey see, monkey do with their monkey ass. And what they do is they compromise the design of the vehicle. They compromise the design of their originality. Therefore, they get no respect from me. They get no respect. So what? They have other customers that'll buy it. I won't buy it. As a matter of fact, I give them a middle finger and give them no stars at all. Say you are a effed up automaker. I appreciate people who stay original. I appreciate those who have been who they always was. They're not all that great, but I'll tell you who definitely get my respect. And that will be McDonald's, White Castles, Burger King, and them who've been around here for years. They've been selling burgers the way they've been selling it since day one. They deserve their respect. You know what? I honor them because they stayed original. They may sell a little bit of ice cream on the side. They may have their little chicken fingers and, you know, they may have a, a twisted sort of breakfast that might be different with a couple of different um, condiments on the side. And, you know, some of them, they, they sell shakes and, and maybe inside out burgers, but they're still the same. They still have the golden arch. McDonald's is McDonald's, no matter what the hell you think. They've been selling their wonderful fries since day one, and today they're still selling their fries. They deserve respect. As a matter of fact, I would invest in them because of the specific fact they stayed on their grind. My honor goes to those who stay on their square, and they are who they are, and they're not going to allow the environment to change them. Those are the people who have honor to themselves, and they have a goddamn backbone. Do you understand? So, getting on to what we were talking about, specifically, you got the example there. That's what I mean by staying on your square. That in itself deserves respect. Because it's difficult at a time where everybody's trying to inspire you and tell you to do something different. You got other salespeople saying, well, you know, you should do this. And you got these, these kindergarten college graduates who think they know something because they finally read a book who will tell you, well, you know, the market says, you know, you should do that because the market is more open to this. And, you know, it's a good idea to do that. When your dumb ass should turn around and pull down your pants and say, you see my ass? OK, get moving. You understand? I'm staying on my square. I'm going to stay original. I may not be as great as others in the first two or three years, but you give me some time. My name is going to be out there. Give me some time. I'm pretty sure McDonald's, KFC, and other type of companies and, and people who sold paper and, and discs and music, nobody knew anything about them for the first two years. But now, decades later, they're all over the goddamn country because they stood on their square. They sold little white square hamburgers or White Castles, and that's what they're selling, little square white hamburgers and White Castles, and they're all over the... Uh, all over the country with respect so the hell with what you think well you know we got to be progressive things keep changing and 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 we keep going on well you asshole you keep changing okay go ahead with your inconsistency and your lackluster mentality okay and uh have fun with you selling your product and your company overseas in a different country because nobody wants you over here at least I don't. I respect those who are original, not you. Especially you, you ridiculous, redundant, retard-like dealerships. I don't want your plastic garbage. That belongs in the trash heap, and it belongs in the wrecker lot. The wrecker uh, lot. You know, the buy here, pay here. You know, I see that's junk in the in the uh, in the junkyard all the time, where it belongs. You and your emblems. <clears throat> now, besides being original, you notice that I just had a uh, an interview with a LGB. I can't say it. Never can. Okay, with the uh, the LG community, and someone asked me a question. I'm going to ahead and answer right here before I get into the spill of this audio. I know I wasted like five ten minutes already doing that, and I wanted to know uh, where I met this 
guy from that? How did you do it? You know, you're alpha and you got three companions, three beautiful girls. How do you come across somebody who's from the LGB, whatever else? Okay. I told you I had friends everywhere. Let me, let me give you a small spill and I'm going to tell you how we met. I got friends everywhere. I'm not biased and I'm not, uh, what do you call that? I'm not prejudiced at all. I am a universal type of individual. I do have friends and associates from the LG whatever community. Just because we don't agree with our, you could say, sexual preferences, our, our lifestyle, that doesn't mean we need to disrespect each other and we can't come together with certain agreements. You get that? So therefore, you can't really and you can't never point your finger at uh, LC and Morpheus and say that I am biased, I'm a uh, uh, hyper... Uh, judgmental of other people's preferences. You can't say that I'm hateful either. Okay? Because I am universal. I'm all about the truth and I'm all about the facts and I talk about the subjects. I don't talk about the people. So, for one, he was here as one evidence that I don't turn my back against them. And for two, they're people just as well. They have feelings. They have a life. They have relationship woes as well, and they also have their struggles. So that's also to let you know that I am concerned for every human being, no matter what type of preferences of a lifestyle that they have. Now, where, where I met him at was a store, actually. And uh, he approached me because normally I don't, uh, I'm, I'm very discreet with how I dress. And I don't walk around and try to show off my muscles and uh, prove how tall I am. And you can't prove it. I mean, you don't see me when I'm walking in the room. I'm tall. But I don't try to uh, be this this masculine presence that's just going to demand attention to the whole room. I do my best not to do that. I like to be obscured and I like to be um, incognito. I, I try my best to just stay in the shadows because I really don't want the spotlight like there. Obviously, I, I don't care about that. But he just so happened to catch me when me and my companions was coming from the gym. Because most times they are there, all three girls, they're going to be there. If you see two of them, one of them might be in the other aisle. If you see one, please believe two of them might be sitting right there on the bench. Or they're staring right at you at a distance waiting for you to jump so they can pull out their fly squatter. You know, I don't have to. And it's kind of funny. I don't want to talk about it, but I'm just going to say it. It almost feels as if I don't need a bodyguard, meaning they are so discreet with their behavior. They can be several feet away. I mean, when we're in a store, they can be on the other side of the store, actually looking from the other aisle. And if someone approaches me, they're ready with their fly squatter, meaning they're looking for someone to start some trouble. And I didn't ask them to do this. This wasn't the plan. This is not what I asked them to do. They are my companions. They are my girls. I'm the protector. I'm the provider here. I'm the one who's giving the massage on their shoulder and saying, good, good job, girl. Good job. I love you. Good job. Right? But they're giving me so much value. They're doing above and beyond that I didn't even ask for. And so, getting past myself and my personal <laughs> life, okay, just a little something to throw out there. It's, just, it's very interesting. It's just, it's very interesting how they do it. Because sometimes I won't even see uh, companion number two. And after I have a conversation with someone, she will walk from, I don't know where the hell she come from. And she'll walk right next to me and she'll say, so who was that? I seen them flinching and uh, I was paying attention to them because they look kind of funny. I'm like, dang, baby, like where <laughs> I didn't even see where you was at. Like, where the hell you come from? But that's what she does. So I do. I'll be honest with you. And I, I don't want to talk about it. I feel sorry for any female who get jumpy. If there was a female who tried to assault me, right? If a female or even a male, I can even say a male as well. I can say anyone, but namely a female because they're, they're females themselves. If a female tried to get jumpy, I promise you, one of these girls, just like a geese would do if you're messing around with their uh, their uh, eggs that you're in their area where they mate, 
You don't see this geese from nowhere. You don't see it. The only time you realize there's a geese is when that geese is already up on you, flying right in your face with their wings, flapping at you. That's what's going to happen. And I'm going to feel sorry for the girl because they have no filter. You think I'm bad. You think that I am uh, tough on this audio. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. They, they don't give a care at all. They just, they're, they're at the point where if a nickel drops and it's coming my way and probably going to ruffle up my creased pants, it's done for the whole room. So anyhow, get past all that. I'm, I'm, I am don't want to talk about it. It's just something to share with you because, you know, I've been holding that in for a long time. It's, it's very interesting. I didn't ask him to do that. And most times I tell him, calm down, it's okay. But she's still going to be sitting on the bench or a chair and watching from a distance and wait for somebody to flinch. And she's going to be over there. And whoever that person is, they're hemmed up. And I can't help you after that. You're done. And that's just, I, I don't know. It's their form of showing love in a different way besides everything else that they're already doing. It's 130%. Anyhow, so he's seen the companions around me, but don't really understand. He didn't understand what was going on. But still, we came from the gym and I was standing there with, a, uh, with my muscle builder shirt on, which I don't normally do at all because I like to wear a shirt, a long sleeve shirt. And to be discreet because I don't show off. I don't show them off either. Because most times we don't. We we separate on purpose. Because I don't want people to. I don't want that attention. I don't want that. You know there was a time I actually lied. Just for the sake of not getting attention. When one of the clerks was like. Hey are those three your girls? Or are they your daughters? I had to lie and say. Well you know they're they're my friends. You'll say why are you doing this Morphe? You should be proud. Well it has nothing to do with pride. I just don't want that type of attention. You know, I'm low key. I like to be smooth with what I do. You know, I don't I don't like that. It's unnecessary to the showboat and to show off. You know, even if I, you know, if I was a millionaire and I'm not, you never know cuz I'll be walking around with some raggedy pants on, regular sneakers and probably even a mustache and and driving a Honda Civic. You would never know. I mean, I don't care to show anything. I'm just who I am. Anyhow, that didn't work that day because I'm standing there with my tank top shirt on coming from the gym. So I'm I'm buffed. I'm, I'm jacked up. Right. Veins popping out and everything. And I was in the uh, the health aisle, the health food. And so he approached me. He said, man, dude, look at all those muscles. You look jacked up. Can I ask you a question? I was like, sure. You know, go ahead and ask away. And he began to ask me some uh, some ideas on how to lose weight and take care of himself. And again, normally I don't give out any tips without getting paid for it. But I figured, hey, it's a cool time. And, you know, it, I had like, you know, a little bit of time on my hands. So I gave him a couple of tips here. Say, you know, how do you eat and and uh, what's your idea? What's your future plan? And he began to tell me that he needed some help with his health. And um, he asked me, he said, I don't want to offend you, but. I'm, uh, you know, from the LGBT, whatever, and I'm interested in males, but I'm not coming at you that way. So I don't want you to be offended, but it's OK that you will be able to train a person like me. And will you feel comfortable being around me, knowing that I got a different life preference? Right. So I said, well, I don't have a problem with it. Sure. You know, I, I can help you out and put you on a regiment and all that type of thing, because, you know, you're still a person, you know, whatever it's whatever it don't matter. You know, you, you're not coming off to me defensive. And um, I mean, there's no expectation between the both of us. You just decline at a particular point. So that's how we hooked up with each other. And that's how later on in the future, or you could say the future that you experience, where I was able to interview him and have a decent man-to-man uh, -man conversation about his relationships according to the LGB, I can't say it, just say LB the LB society. So that's how we met up with each other. And that should answer your question there. So, um, I mean, that's how it happens. I mean, they're just people just like any other type of common person. They just have a different lifestyle, which is their business, whatever goes on in his life. I mean, is it in his, uh, relationship life that's between him and his relationship life. 
I just thought it was very interesting to get his perspective and to share his perspective and experience with you, the listeners and the uh, viewers. Had to put my wind visor up. I was getting kind of loud. I'm tired of um, straining my voice just to speak up through the speaker. But um, in the interview and spending time with him uh, during the interview process and getting the speaker set up and everything like that, um, there was no issue at all. You know, everything that we talked about, some there was this joking and um, a little bit of back and forth on relationship uh, dynamics between the the heterosexual community versus the community that's of the LGB, whatever. And it was good collaboration to see the differences. And I really wanted to know what type of struggles that they're going through. Is it the same as the heterosexual um, community? And what are the differences in between? And is there struggles that he's going through as an individual uh, man of that community? as he calls it, versus our own. So for you to have different perspectives and for us to come together and for you to listen to that, it's educational. Or you say edutainment that, um, you know, answers a lot of questions. So there you go right there. Now, get on to the subject and I'm going to call it quits because I'm already 20 minutes in and I am destroying my plan of trying to make it 30 minutes. I'm going to talk about something because I am in the bracket, meaning of the six feet tall something individuals. But I'm not in that bracket of the idiot six feet tall idiot, uh, idiots. Well, what are you talking about, Morpheus? Now you're throwing out darts once again. Well, no, we're going to talk about something that is very, very important. And I'm not, uh, what do you call that? Uh, I'm not vouching for women. I vouch you for, for truth. Okay. I'm not pandering to women in this conversation, but I understand what women are talking about. And I understand why they do what they do on the often. See, we got a thing now. Let's talk about what it is. Where women are saying that they can't trust a man. Men lie. They tell stories and they don't want to depend on a man they don't want to uh give any one man validation so they got to have several men to do several things before they decide to be with one man i get it and i'm gonna tell you why i had a moron yeah i'm gonna say moron he knows who he is and i'm not gonna say his name but he knows who he is if he gets this video who called me up and he said you know what man Guess what, man? I'm getting ready to go, and uh, I'm okay. I'm gonna have dinner with uh, one of my, with my girlfriend, man. And uh, I said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, girlfriend? He's like, no. Well, she's just somebody who want to invite me over for dinner, man. She want to get down with the get down, and she liked me, and uh, yeah, man, she saw some interest, and I had to think about it for a second. I said, wait a minute, let me let me do something here. I asked him, I said, okay, uh, I started doing my investigation. When I, listen, when you talk to people, ask, start digging, meaning don't take them for face value. People say all kind of BS all the time. Dig deeper and ask them what do they mean and what is what before you respond. Stop responding just to respond, morons. Start asking questions. Get into the meat of the subject before you respond. Think before you talk. That will help you. So I didn't respond. I got quiet for like two minutes and he said, what's up, man? I said, wait a minute. I said, is this girl, are you going to talk with her full time? Or is it just a simple booty call? And he said, well, no, nah, man, uh, I don't look at her that way. And I'm not so sure, but she invited me over for dinner. So I, I, I think I'm going to go. I said, wait a minute. Wait. I said, you are a man. And you don't know what you want out of that relationship. Now, wait a minute. He started thinking about it. 
I said, man, it's just a dinner, man. And uh, she's just going to invite me over and, you know, it sounds good tonight. Okay, I get it now. I get it. See, the one thing that you must understand, the type of guy that I am, on the often, you're not going to get away with small talk. You don't come to me and talk about this BS. Well, you know, I'm going to do here. I'm going to go over there and, you know, it's just what it is and goodbye. I'm going to hook you one way or the other and I'm going to steer the conversation what it really is. You can't sit here and pull a blind, a blindfold over my eyes and think I'm just going to agree with the conversation. I'm going to question you. Yeah, I'm going to question you. I want to know why you're saying the BS that you're saying. You can't play with me. I'm at zero tolerance. Don't come to me and waste five or ten minutes and think this is going to be some lackadaisical conversation. F that stuff. I ain't got time for it. Go talk to somebody else. If you talk to me, you're in consultation. We're going to get somewhere. You're coming to the Oracle, damn it. I ain't got time to be playing games with you. We got something to talk about. Or Morpheus, how about that? You're coming to Morpheus. And I'm going to give you some answers. So he was like, in return, he said, so what do you mean? Um, you know, is, is just dinner. And I, I immediately went for the juggler, the throat. I said, Bozo, you are the problem. You are why women say what they say about the majority of men. A woman is not simply going to spend her time with you and cook for you if she don't think that there is going to be a future in your in her life. She likes you for a reason and she's looking towards something serious. Usually now there's the majority of three or fours out here that just want to have fun, but it's not going to be based on eating and having dinner. It's a wham bam. Thank you, man, because I've been there before plenty of times. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that because I'm a man of value and my time. So if a woman's going to invite me over, you know, I'm going to be like, oh, uh, no, okay, what time are you free? Okay, 7 o'clock is going to be that time. Okay, um, I'll be there at 7 and, you know, you know what time it is. You know what's up. When I get there, everything should be prepared. Simple as that. Wham, bam, thank you. You know what time it is and I'm out. You know, no later than 9 o'clock. If it's 9 o'clock, I've been there too long. Shoot, hell, sometimes if it's 8 o'clock, I've been there too long. That's on one of the good days. I ain't got time for all that. I need to get out of here. And another thing is, is telling her what it is. Now, when she's talking about sitting down again, watching Netflix, watching movies and eating dinner, and she's cooking, the girl is looking for a long-term relationship. She's not sitting down waiting for you to be some donkey dunk partner she's not looking for a one night stand she's looking for a companion she's looking for a man long term so she's trying to put down her skills she's trying to show you i can cook i can clean and i don't mind smelling like onion rings simple as that simple as that so this moron nine six feet tall idiot talking about well you know um I didn't see it like that. I said, dummy, she's cooking for you because she's opening up the door that maybe, possibly, this may lead to a serious relationship. No girl that I know of that it was a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I'm, I'm going to say a one night stand. I'm going to say one day stand because I just don't donkey dunk during the night, idiots. Why is she cooking for? I am not there to eat food. I am there to put her on her back or to put her on the dresser drawer or to lay her on the floor or to smash her against the wall or to put her in a pressure to put her upside down on her head or to make her drip all over the place in the bathroom or to take her to the balcony or to take her to Mount Kilimanjaro or take her to the Grand Canyon. I'm not there to sit there and eat her food. I don't have time for that. That's for a long-term relationship. Oh, you know, we're going to sit down. We're going to watch a movie for about an hour and a half. No, the hell with that. No, that's, that's all the time I got. I don't have time for all that. No, we're not here for that. 
You call me up to stop by. I'm going to stop by. You better damn well be in your trench coat. So, after uh, coming at him with reality, he said, man, I never thought of it that way. That's, uh, oh, I guess I got to think about it. I said, I'll tell you what, let me make it a little bit more easier for you since you have a hard time thinking. I said, you need to tell this girl what you want out of the relationship. What is it going to be? If it's just gonna, if she's gonna be a fling where you're just gonna stop by and smash her, donkey dunk with her, and that's gonna be it, you need to let her know. If it's going to be a um, relationship where it's gonna end up being serious, go along the path that you're gonna go on, that you continue. Go ahead and go over there and eat dinner with her and give her the false premonition or perception that you may be a suitable companion for her in the future. And he said, wow, I never even thought of that. This is, I never even thought of that. Oh man. You see what I mean? And I had to get on him, I railed him. What I'm telling y'all right now is light compared to how I railed him. And he thought I was vouching for women. No, I understand what women think and I know how they feel about the situation because a lot of times they deal with guys like this who just want to keep uh, stringing them along. That's what it's called, stringing them along just to get them some poom poom. And I told the guy, I said, I understand you don't want to lose the opportunity with her. I know you want to get the poom poom and telling her the truth may not allow you to be in her bedroom. But you need to tell her the truth, not for her honor, but for your honor, and be honest. Let me tell you the truth, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut something deep here. I'm going to put it where it matters. A lot of men don't have an abundance mindset. They got a lying mindset. They lie and they deceive, and then they want to blame women. They want to say, well, women are always manipulative. Women are always sneaky. They always got a sneaky link. They're doing things backwards and they don't want to be honest. But yet, the problem is not them. The problem is the men themselves because y'all don't want to be honest. You don't want to tell it like it is. And you don't want to be open and explain your situation. So what happens is a lot of these guys who have no abundance mindset. They got the, the one-eyed is disease thinking that one woman is the only woman that's ever going to exist in his life. He'll do anything and everything to lie to this girl just to get him some poom poom activity. Which is very redundant, it's childish, and it's pathetic, and it shows what type of man he really is. He's a cow. He's not a man. He's a cow. A moo moo. Not a man. If he was honest, that'd be different. In which he need to be honest, but they can't. See, they don't understand there's plenty of women. Plenty of women all over the planet. Plenty of opportunity. Just because he may miss out on one or two, or just miss out on the majority of them because he wants to be honest and tell the truth, that doesn't mean another one's not going to come along and say, okay, I can get down with that. I get it. It is what it is. Okay. I mean, this, you know, we're just going to uh, spend a little bit of time with each other, just look a little bit of poom poom, a little bit of. Uh, you know, body smashing. Okay, I can go with that. Then there are others that might say, "Well, I don't want that. I want a, I want a relationship. I want a full time relationship." You know what? That's good because what happens is, you know what she's on. Even if you, you got all the signs as it is, I mean, she's cooking and she's inviting you over and spending time with you. You know, she's expecting something more. But at least you can't break her. You're not becoming the uh, statistic. You're not making matters worse. You're not being a part of the problem. You're being a part of the solution by letting her know exactly what it is up front. But a lot of these six feet tall, sometimes five foot eight, five foot ten bozos don't get that because these are men who are desperate. They're low value and they have no options because they got to lie. The moment you got to lie it's because you're pathetic. Yeah, I said it. You're pathetic because you got to lie instead of manning up and telling the truth and moving on with your goddamn life. 
Let me tell you something. I'm going to hurry up and bring this down a little bit. Okay? Real women are usually looking for leaders, not followers. They're looking for masculine men, not simps, not you weaklings, and not you liars. If you don't understand that, you are your own problem. So you got to understand this. A lot of times it's men who lead the way. And you will often hear women say, well, you know, we can't find decent, suitable men. We can't find men that are real leaders. Most of them are, are weak. Most of them are soft. Most of them are players. Some of them are liars. Guess what? They are right about that. See, let me tell you something. Let me show you something that's really, really important. And I need you to check this out. Okay? Check this out. It's one thing for you beta men to talk about what women are doing wrong and how they like to finesse, how they like to carry themselves a certain way or be a 304 or Instagram thought. It's one thing altogether. But it makes it a total different contradictory when you as a man, you are the problem. You are the liar. You are the deceiver and you're making the dating scale convoluted with confusion. Because if you think just going around with these women and their emotions and decisions and you have no accountability with it, you are a dumbass. And a lot of you men are doing that. You'll say, well, she decided to do it. So what? She invited me over for dinner, but we just so happened to donkey dunk. And that's that. And I left. After we donkey dunked and after just a couple of dates, I told her that I had to move on. Or she here's the thing. What she'll say is after a while, after y'all donkey dunk for a few days or a few weeks, a few months and a few years, after she done cooked for you a few days, a few weeks and a few years, after y'all watch TV or television shows or done some sort of a relationship activity outside of Donkey Dunk, either for a day, a week, or a year, she's going to say what? She's going to say what? What are we? What are we? Where are we going? What is our relationship? The reason why she's asking you that is because she's looking for direction. And then guess what some of you monkeys would do? Well, uh, nine foot tall dummy. Well, six foot tall idiot. Um, uh, uh, I, you know what, baby? What, why are you tripping? You know, we just spending time with each other. You know, we just friends. You know, we just, we just having don't, we just donkey dunking with each other. It's just pleasure. Why are you tripping? And she's like, wait a minute. I've cooked for you. I've washed some of your clothes. We've been hanging out for a day, a week, and a year. And now you're telling me all we are is just F buddies? And guess what, Bozo? You know what you just did? You just made another angry woman. Yes, on her side, it is up to her to decide and be careful of what guy she choose to bring into her body and her life but on your but on the other end you are supposed to be the leader you're supposed to be the man of the house you are supposed to change the goddamn narrative so if she's lost and confused or discombobulated and unbalanced it's because of you <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. Of course, you're going to lose, but nobody wants to lose. That's the problem we felt. Y'all rather lie to win than to lose to succeed. Let me say that again because some of you don't understand. Too retarded. You men rather lie to you rather lie to deceive and win some fake relationship 
than to tell the truth to succeed. Meaning, when you tell the truth, you're going to lose, but you're going to succeed because you steered the relationship and reality in the right direction of facts. Therefore, she, it won't catch up to you. Facts. Therefore, later on in your relationship, she's not going to say, you lied to me. Facts. Because you're not going to steer her and break her heart or her momentum or better yet. How about this? You're not going to waste two or three good years of her limited time lying to her and deceiving her just to get some poom poom. She could spend that year and that two years finding a man who's worthy of her time and valuing her body, thus steering her in the right direction of beginning to create a decent and a new family and correct her path of discorrection. The point of the matter and the moral of the story is this, men. As I told my friend, it either is or isn't. What is it going to be? If it's going to be donkey dunking, you need to tell her. If it's going to be a full-time relationship, then you go along with the program and let her build it up. Meaning, naturally, she's going to say, hey, let's hang out. I'm going to cook for you. I'm going to do this and that. You want a body massage? Sure. Hey, I'm not doing nothing on Saturday. I'm getting ready to wash my clothes. Do you have a load of clothes? I can wash your clothes too because I don't mind, baby. You'll say, oh, okay. Sure, if that's what you want to do, baby. Oh, I noticed that your refrigerator is a little bit low and you need some food in there. Um, I tell you what, I know how to cook pretty good. And uh, whatever that you have there, I can put together a new entree. If you let me come over and do that for you, I will. But, oh, okay. And she start ironing your socks, getting your ties together, spending the night every now and then. She's hanging out with you every now and then. She's cutting off her game, her plans with family and friends because she wants to spend time with you. She's shutting down her social media. She stops the bikini pics and everything like that because she see you as a valuable man. You just go around the program and let it happen because you want it to happen anyway. But when she starts going down that path and all you want to do is just donkey dunk and get into her poom poom, but yet you're not ready you're not interested and you don't want a full relationship that she's preparing herself to go down, you need to open up your dumb mouth, dummy. And I agree with women. Too many men aren't men. They are boys in men's breeches. That's what it is. Instead of you manning up, talking, and directing the relationship, Y'all want to go along with the program and blame her 100% of the time. It's not 100% women's fault. It's not 100% because they're making bad decisions. They made a bad decision by being with you, bozos. That's the bad decision that they made. Because sometimes it's deceiving. Sometimes they don't know when you're sitting there eating their steak and potatoes on in their kitchen, on their table that they have prepared for you, they're thinking that you're taking them serious. But you're not. And because there are so many bozos and idiots just like you, you create a bad future and a bad experience with these girls in which they're walking around talking about, I don't trust these men. They're all liars. They're all about one thing and um, they're always cheating and they're always uh, sneaking and uh, they're not dependable and they're not men. This is why they keep saying that because you men are making the scenario and you're not changing the programming because you're not men. You're not leading the way. You're goddamn followers. <laughs> All for the poom poom. Destroying the future and a girl's life just for the poom poom because you want to get it at all cost possible. But yet you want to pay the ultimate cost, which is being honest and telling the truth. Telling the truth is going to get you to lose. Yes. You're not going to be able to donkey dunk with her. Correct. She's going to tell you, hell no. Of course. But you know what? It's better for you to lose because you're going to gain because. What one woman may say no, nine others might say yes. 
but why why ruin a woman's life just because you want to get the poom poom and now she's no good for every other man or she has to get over the fact that you lied to her or she got to go through therapy to realize what a good man is especially when there's no father in her life no brothers to steer her in the right direction now she got to wait a year or something to get you out of her mind because you wasn't honest you know wasted a good portion of her life we got to stop being biased and dumb minded talking about well you know all women are this way and they have bad choices and bad activities and they're they're not taking accountability of their actions because a lot of it isn't their fault it's not their fault the majority of the time the majority of the time is you bozo men with low standards you lie you got one itis you don't have an abundance mindset so what you lose the poom poom with one girl there's several others some of you idiots are talking about well you know because we're not going to be able to do nothing with her if we tell the truth so the hell what there are thousands of other girls. She's not the only girl on the goddamn planet, dummy. So what you lose with her? You may win with someone else. But why would you risk her life, her time, and her space, and even her body, all because of your own one hour or 30 minute pleasure? You are a bozo and you deserve everything that she comes at you with. Y'all want to talk about, well, um, you know, we got this, 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 this no fault divorce and, 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 you know, women are coming up with these false allegations and believe all women and whatever and whatever. This stuff is happening because of you men. You're creating this scenario. They're coming at you because you're not honest. Because you want to do dirty and do dirt against them. So they coming back at you, and that's what the hell you get for being a dumb damn bozo. If you tell the truth to begin with and you steer the relationship in the right direction, you won't have this problem. It either is or isn't. Let her know up front. Hey, I don't want nothing more from you. I just want to have fun. I'm here to just enjoy my time with you. I'm not, I'm not interested in a relationship, and I'm not ready for marriage. If you're down with that, if you're cool with me just spending time with you, you know, something might happen. You know, I am interested in the poom poom and it might be a short amount of time, but I don't want to stay. I don't want to make more out of it than what it is. If you're cool with that, then we can go along with it. If that's what it takes, then that's good. As a matter of fact, either she will say yes or no. But according to relationship, you don't have to say it's going to be a relationship. It's going to flow on its own. It's going to blossom on its own. It's different when it comes to not having a relationship. You got to tell them that you're not going down that path no matter what. But if you're going to be in a relationship, that's something you don't have to say because it's going to be natural. You naturally come together and start doing things together. Do you all understand? Some of you men need to grow the hell up. Some of you men need to grow the hell up and stop having one-itis. You don't always have to lie to get your way. You can tell the truth and keep it moving. If you keep lying, it's going to catch up to you. As a matter of fact, you'll catch a case one of these days, and that's what the hell you get for being a stupid liar. Sometimes tell the truth, tell her what it is. You're not going to ruin her time, and you're not going to ruin yourself. If y'all don't realize this, that's okay. Keep playing around. One of these days, that Venus flytrap is going to enclose around you and you'll find yourself underneath the prison or maybe underneath the dirt because you did it to yourself. Be honest, be straightforward, and be a man about the situation. And therefore, it's not only better for you, it's going to be better for every other relationship and experience that people are going to come, uh, they're going to encounter or come in contact with. All right, I'm going to get off this audio. This is the lesson for the day. I'm trying to cut it as much as I can. And I have more for you to come in the future. I know you learned something and you heard it here in the Academy of Wildman. Wow